Psalms 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel. And we can put our name there. Will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shed at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our discussion is finding security in God. Finding security in God. At times of crisis and times of challenges, what holds your anchor? There's a song we sing where your anchor holds in the times of storm. Because you see, if you are going on a journey and for the, by the time the writer wrote the, the song, the main uh, way of travel for, between countries and continents was by sea. But this same boat ship that you have been using and it's been stable, once the storm comes, it can be terrible. But you need an anchor, which can, if you realize what you are going to have, a worse danger, you can put down your, your anchor, and that you hold on to something, so that it stops moving. So the songwriter asks, will your anchor hold when you come to this, and this, and the other? That was the accurate discussing. You know, the moment you live in fear, the moment you live in, in um, uh, today without any hope for tomorrow, chances are you will not even be useful today. It's a pity that the word of God tells us enough for the day are the evils thereof. Yet we keep having affecting today's energy because of distributing to tomorrow. Where you are so worried about how your child will, will make it in the university, given the way the school fees are going up, that you are not able to concentrate on helping him to go through his primary school. Our discussion is, will you, can you have this security at any time, but especially at the time of storm? Once you are insecure, several things goes wrong, will go wrong. Number one, like I've just said, you become worried, you become uh, not able to think. Because of your insecurity, you think. It's like just like a child who is uh, doing an exam. And the, the way they are finding the subject, it sounds like they'll fail. What happens? They will read a, a page right up to the bottom, and they look up again and realize they cannot remember whether they read the page or did not read the page. That's why fear of failing is a sure way of ensuring you actually fail your exam. Because you are so worried about the exam, you can't study for it. Now, because you can't study for it, you actually fail. And it's the same thing with all challenges that you are going to face in life. So the first problem of this insecure way of living, when you, don't, you are, cannot face the challenges of life, is that it stops you from thinking. It stops you from thinking. And you can't think well. And because you can't think well, you therefore will not make good decisions. And you invest wrongly. But the second problem of this insecure approach to life is the fact that not only would you, th would you not think, think well and therefore make good decisions, but the second thing it does is that it makes you suspicious of people. You feel like they are not helpful, they cannot be of any use. And the moment you actually lose this ability to, to relate well with the people, you end up, even with drawing the energy, the help you could have enjoyed from your friends, but now you are suspicious of them. Because of your insecurity, 
anything. Somebody talks something or if some two people are talking and you think they are talking about you. Because somehow you are so insecure. You think the world is coming to an end or you are in trouble. And so you, your relationships are also actually affected. But thirdly and most importantly, it actually does affect you physically. Many, many sick people are not sick because there was a virus or because of, um, of a jam. They are sick because of wrong thoughts. Fears bring them to where the, 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 the adrenaline is overworking. And you end up with stomach ulcers, you end up with high temperatures, you end up with other physical ailments that all come from your inability to face the challenge into the future. And, uh, and that can be quite a problem when you, when you are actually, and you'll be literally sick. I was asking a doctor, you know, how do you get sick? He says, you'll be sick. You go to the toilet, you produce blood, yet there is no germ or virus that caused it. It's simply that you are too worried. You cannot, you cannot your body systems are getting wrong instructions that end up destroying their, 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 your, your systems. I'm also told one of the problems is that when you are in that turmoil, your immune system also goes down. So you are not able to, you are not able to deal with the immunity. You know, you know, not have to deal with the challenges. Now, although the disease had nothing to do with the virus, now when a virus comes and your immunity is down, you will get opportunistic diseases. All because of this inability to deal with the crisis, which may not have arrived yet, but the crisis you fear could actually come. It will create a big problem for you. And so you need to ask yourself, is that where I am? In a, unable to deal with the, with, with, the issues, with the issues because of the fear of what can happen. But the worst of them, when you actually are insecure, is that you tend to be un un unsure of, of anything. Unsure, you start doubting yourself. So the end product is lack of confidence. And when you lack confidence, basically there's very little you can actually achieve. You try to sit on a seat and you start thinking that seat will fall. So you have to test whether the seat can hold you. You lack confidence in everything and in every way. In the process, when you lack confidence, you can think about anything else except things going wrong. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are view of self, your self-worth. It's terrible. You think you are not good. You think other people are okay, but you are not okay. You have no ability. You are a failure. And so you have the wrong view of yourself. If you have the wrong view of yourself, you can't face life, you can't face the future. And it all started by you looking at a problem that's likely to happen or is happening already and getting paralyzed by it. And my prayer is that as we think about those circumstances, that you will come to where you ask yourself, is that what you are going through? By the way, the challenges we are talking about are very are very interesting. You know, the challenge could be something like you're facing an exam, like we said, but it could also be I'm about going, going to approach a girl and she's likely to say no. You get so worried about the fact that you reject you that you can't even approach her. And there are many boys like that. There are many girls like that. In the end, you have no relationship, not because people don't want to have a relationship with you, but you are too afraid to make any, any progress. Or it may be fear of a disease. Could it be COVID-19? Or could it be, uh, what is it you are fearing? A disease. Maybe your parents died out of a cancer. And so you keep thinking about cancer. And uh, although you are not sick yourself, you have been checked, you are quite okay. But you are so afraid of cancer that you can't move. And that's what is causing you all this trouble. So the, the causes of these insecurities can be many. And uh, the devil can use almost anything to get you into this panic situation where you cannot face, face life. Maybe even with financial. 
you are thinking that uh, you are not uh, you are not, not earning enough money to deal with the issues you are, you are likely to face in the future and so you are in, already in a turmoil over it if you are in that kind of circumstance psalms 121 is the psalm to read it says i'll lift my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from and i think it's a very very important thing to to, un to understand that you need to answer the question, where does my help come from? What will give you peace at even the middle of, a, of Tamil will be to answer the question, where does my help come from? I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? And you need to be able to say that it's your source of uh, help Number one is not you. Because if it is you, you know yourself too well to know you are not reliable. That's why I keep laughing when people keep telling you, have self-confidence. But you don't even know me. You don't know the self. You are telling me to have confidence in. My weaknesses are hidden from you. So tell me you have self-confidence. It's, it's because you don't know who I am. So the verse is asking, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? I hope you know it cannot actually come from you. You are the wrong person to, 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 to deal with because you know yourself. But then your help also doesn't come from your friends, your bosses, your colleagues. Because although they may have the help, all they need is for somebody to give up, to tell them a bad story about you. Oh, Nganga, you know the other day he was talking about you. He doesn't respect you. He doesn't even, he's only a pretender. Now, within no time, the help you expected from the boss is vanished. You cannot help. So if you are, you are looking and trusting help from human beings, there will be trouble. You know the scriptures say, cursed is he who put his trust on man. In other words, you are cursed. Why can't you put your trust in man? I just suggest three. Number one, I've told you, Somebody could defame you to him, so he won't help you. But number two, he himself has his own problems. So you got somebody who is rich, but he has, he has, his property has just been, been attached by a bank because he had a loan, he had not paid, and he has nothing he can give. He, even he himself is in a crisis. But as far as you can see, he is a very rich man. So his own problems will stop him from helping you. But thirdly, and importantly, he could die. The guy you have always trusted yourself just goes to sleep and doesn't wake up. Or he falls and by the time you write to the hospital, the heart attack, he is dead. So when the verse is saying, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. In other words, where does my help come from? Why am I going to be confident as I face life? Why am I going to be okay as I face the challenges of tomorrow? And the psalmist is right. It's from the Lord. My help, verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So, whether your problem is psychological, some disturbing thoughts that are putting pressure on you, whether it's financial, that you don't seem to be able to live within the money that is available, whether it is social, there is somebody who doesn't like you and they are defaming you, they are spoiling your reputation. Or it is not just social, it may be something to do with sickness. You are actually sick. Even if it is sickness, verse 2 gives the answer, my help comes from the Lord. You know, I could see fishermen who have been fishing throughout the night that we have given the story in the New Testament. And uh, they really must be frustrated by the morning. Then Jesus, a carpenter's son, tells them, just throw the net on the other side. And they catch so many uh, fish that they really don't know what to do with it. But the guy who has told them is the son of a carpenter. But what they forget is he is Lord of a nature. So it means that even in your professional challenges that you are going through, 
as a worker that are likely you fear you might end up being fired or the client might end up canceling the contract because you don't seem to make heads or tails of the issues you are dealing with. The verse is saying, my helps come from the Lord. Even that one will come from the Lord. And I think it's important to understand that there isn't anything. He is not limited. That's why he's God. God has no limits. That's why Jesus would walk in the water just to show as a creator the rule of the law of gravity. It is a law. And he can contradict it. He can, that's why he can actually walk on water. You need to understand whatever your challenge, whatever it is you are going through, that you can actually go through it with the knowledge that the God you are committing yourself to is the maker of heaven and earth. He is the one who, is, who makes the rules of nature. You know, sometimes people think that the, 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 the devil is in charge. You must remember the devil is created by God. You know, like Pastor White used to say, the devil is God's devil, you know. He created him. That's why in the book of Job, he needs permission to do anything. So you do not, should not be giving a lot of credit to the devil. If you have given yourself to God so that your help does not come from friends, does not come from self, your helps come from God, then it will be important to understand that the God you believe in is the God who can manage the devil? Who can actually manage your enemies? It may be your parents. You have trusted, but they are dead. You are left not knowing which way to turn. But if you believed in the God of your parents, even if your parents die, you need to understand that the God of your parents is still alive. And he can deal with it. So I love this psalm. Uh, where does my help come from? My helps come from the Lord. Who is the Lord? The maker of heaven and earth. So, it will be important to ask yourself, who are you relying on? The psalmist answers, my help comes from the Lord. What about you? Comes from your employer? But your employer, in these difficult days, may end up financially collapsing. Where will you get your help from? You know, you need to understand that as a Christian, as one who trusts in God, your help should come from, hev from the maker of heaven and earth. Of course, it could pass your employer. But like I normally say, your employer is simply a pipe through, where, through which the water comes from God who owns the reservoir. And flows to you. And the pipe can disappear. But as long as the reservoir has water, we can put a new pipe. It's not that expensive. Water can still reach you. And it's, that's what you need to understand. Your employer, your parents, your friends are simply pipes through which God supplies your needs. Remember, He's the one who has said, in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And my God shall supply not some of your needs. All your needs. Not according to your bank account. According to his riches in glory. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. My friend. I think it is important to understand that if you start taking Whatever source you, ha you have mis been mistaking at the reservoir, take it as a pipe. And then you know that the reservoir is there. So when the, the pipe refuses to work, it can be replaced. If it can own the reservoir, surely financially managing a new pipe is not a big deal. And God is the owner of the reservoir. All your needs, do not direct them to human beings. Direct them to God then God himself will choose the pipe to use to supply the need. Because it's not a man. It's God who has said, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. 
not according to the employer's mad money, not according to your parents' riches and inheritance. Even if your inheritance is gone, your parents just decide they will disinherit you. If you are relying on God, that's one pipe gone. God will still be able to provide through other pipes. And it's important to then understand that God will, will, now, will, will be the provider. So, where does your help come from? When you know that your help comes from God, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is omnipotent, omniscient, he, then it means that whatever the possibility of a crisis, even in the middle of it, you know God will deal with you. You know, I keep telling people the thing that helps is to understand the worst that can happen to you is to die. But if you die and you believe in God, it means you go to heaven. So it's not a, you cannot be afraid. No. One of the philosophies I use myself in facing issues in my life is when I'm getting disturbed by a problem and I'm so uncomfortable, I just wait, wait a minute. If the worst happened, what is the worst that can happen? Okay, my boss is giving me trouble. What's the worst that can happen? Is get I get fired. Then I ask myself, what will happen to me when I'm fired? Can I trust God to handle me when I'm jobless? The moment that is sorted out, my small problem will look very small. Because I can see, even if it was bigger, I could have, I could have handled it. <coughs> I believe in a God who can help me to handle it. So it's important to understand this, that the God we believe in can handle any problem. So do not struggle and be frustrated about a small problem. Why don't you think, tell it, what's the worst you can offer? Then ask yourself, can I cope? Does a God I believe in, can he handle that kind of a, that kind of a problem? The moment you have confidence, he can. You will be able to be at peace. And people will be wondering, why are you at peace? Oh, the peace I have is according to Philippians chapter 4. He, he is saying, don't be anxious. Instead, by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. Then what will happen? The peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's what we are talking about today. What do you do that gives you peace even in the middle of a crisis? It is that commitment to God as your, as your helper. Let's look at verse 3 and 4. It says, He will not let your foot slip. He, he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Here, we are dealing with the issue of, okay, up in verse 1 and 2, you have agreed. God is the one who supplies all your needs. Mm. Pastor 3 and 4 says, might he sometimes forget you? Might he look at another side and you will suffer on your own? That's why he is saying, he will not let your foot to sleep. In other words, there is no time when you are walking, when God is not going to be there. He who watches over you doesn't need to sleep. You will not slumber. Because you see, however good I am as a policeman or your watchman, all I need is for sleep to overpower me and the thief will come and do whatever and, uh, when I'm actually asleep. But the God who watches over you does not slumber. He doesn't. He's not drossy. He's not a man. He doesn't have the human limitations. Indeed, he who watches over you, over Israel, over you, will neither slumber nor sleep. Is that the comforting? That God be with you. I think in Hebrews he says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. My understanding of leave is leave you temporarily. My understanding of forsake is abandon you. But he is promising he will be with you. He can't leave you for a while, a little while, and he cannot leave you for good. He will be with you from the time you commit your life to him. He will be with you for eternity. I think that's a very, very important thing. You are, you, his protection on you is full time. There, are no, there is no slumber, no sleep. He'll be with you everywhere. 
So that means you can never get surprises because he himself cannot be surprised. It means whatever will come your way, the devil will seek permission from him and he says you will not allow anything to come to you if he has not given you a way of escape. And I think that's a very, very important, very important thing to, to understand. Look at verse 5 and 6. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Why are you not going why are you going to be secure in every situation? Whatever may come, whatever the challenge you are facing currently or you're facing in future, why will you be why will you be at peace? Because he has regulated impact of what happens to you. In other words, the sun is coming for you. Hot sun. What does he do? When that happens, he becomes your shade at your right hand. You know, a shade simply reduces the impact of the sun. And God is promising that you will do that. Whatever the challenges you are going through in life, you will become your shade to reduce the impact. Whether we are talking about the sun, in the process the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. So you can sleep like a baby every night. Not because there are no problems and prom and thieves and uh, murderers moving around who even may be after you. But because God is saying he's a shade, he's the one who will protect you. And um, that's a very wonderful promise. So the first one is, have you picked God, verse 1 and 2, have you picked who your supplier is? It's God. Verse 3 and 4 is asking, are you aware that it doesn't matter the timing he is with you. Your foot cannot sleep. Indeed, he watches over you. Does not need to sleep. He'll be with you all the time. Verse 5 and 6, he is saying, do you understand that even when the impact comes, it will be regulated impact. He is the shade that will protect you from getting the full impact. He will regulate it so that it is the level you can actually handle. Then find finally verse 7 and 8. The Son, the Lord will keep you from all harm. Not some harm. All harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forever. What a promise. Harm will come. That's true. But He will not let it come without his regulation. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. That's what he is, he is actually promising. He is, but that's not enough. It's not just for this life. He is saying both now and forevermore. That means he is promising not only to deal with the problems of now, but even the problem of you going through the grave. Death. Because he's promising to be with you now and then forevermore. That is eternity. It means that you must come to where death is no longer frightening to you. Because the one you have sought help from can handle death. And he will go through the valley of the shadow of death. As Psalms 23 tells us. In such a way that you can handle death. Don't be afraid that the way the disease is going, you'll die. Right through the final moments of, of it, he's promising to be with you because his promise to be with you is accurate forever. So we are asking ourselves, what can give us peace at a time of turmoil? What can make us secure at an insecure time? What can make us face life joyfully without frustration despite all the challenges that come my way. And the psalmist is saying very clearly, I will lift my eyes to the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Which Lord? Not an employer, not a president, not a governor, the maker of heaven and earth. May you truly commit your life to him. You need to repent your sins, repent, run your own life, Allow God to run it 
and then you'll be assured of peace beyond human understanding.